What's going on, everybody? It is March 27th. We've got a Tuesday slate, and it's actually kind of big, and it's actually kind of weird. There's a lot of injury news already. Uh, we've got eight games. It should be pretty fun. Um, last night ended up great. Ended up doubling up, so I'm very happy there. Uh, thank you to Trey Burke um, for going absolutely bananas. I greatly appreciate that. I had an overwhelming amount of him. Um, but yeah, let's just get into it. And we're starting with uh, the worst game of the night, which is perfect. Only 7 o'clock game. I wish this was one of those uh, days where they dropped those 7 o'clock games from the slate. But first game up, Wizards and Spurs. Uh, Wizards, 100 point implied total. They are 1.5 point. Are they really 1.5 point underdogs at home? That can't be right. That'd be ridiculous. I think that's right. Yeah, wow, that's crazy. Spurs favorites. That's insane. Wizards, one, one and a half point underdogs at home. They have the 16th highest implied total, which is dead last. And uh, as you can see here, um, very marginal matchup, positionally speaking. Not a ton to like here. Um... I'll likely have a small amount of Otto Porter, a small amount of Bradley Beal, and a small amount of Markeith Morris, uh, but I don't find anything uh, to be particularly playable here. Um, nobody stands out. There's nobody that I really want much of. Um, I'll be avoiding this game and starting here with the Wizards uh, as much as I possibly can. There's, this is not a game that I want to uh, hitch my wagon to. For the Spurs, 101.5 um, implied total, which is 14th. Uh, it's a little bit better of a matchup. They've got a decent spot um, for small forwards and power forwards. Let's move that out a little bit. So something to look at there. Uh, Aldridge, 9,300 on FanDuel, 9,200 on DK. Been on a bit of a heater lately. Um, so I'd be a little bit more willing to entertain that. Although, you know, not the best center matchup. So it would be a little bit smaller exposure. I think that Patty Mills on FanDuel is worth a peek as a point guard punt. 4,300 on FanDuel. Um average matchup against point guards but if he's going to get you know a high allotment of minutes i realized that he uh had a bit of a dud here but i think he's worth a flyer in a gpp and then um kyle anderson 5300 on fanduel uh always a shot at a decent night from a gpp if you want to call him a small forward if you want to call him a power forward call him a point guard some sort of amalgamation of all of that stuff uh, you know, point forward type guy, fifty three hundred worth a worth a look uh, with this particular matchup. Nobody on the Spurs is anybody that I'm going to have with any sort of large amount, but I'm assuming that I'll see a a, a small trickle of Aldridge, Mills, uh, Kyle Anderson, and Murray. But the less said about this game is then like you know that's better. Uh, it's a good game. Like I I like it as a an actual basketball game, but from a fantasy perspective, it's kind of not the best. Um, so we'll move to the Raptors. Raptors, 117.75 implied total, which is uh, tied for first. Is that right? That can't be right. Why is that showing one and a half? No, it really is. I even clicked on the wrong one. Okay, cool. Two really random totals tied. So... Uh, they are nine-point favorites at home um, against the Nuggets. Nuggets on the back-to-back. -back. Uh, Toronto with a good center matchup. I gotta bump this shit again. Jesus. Lovely. Breaking stuff left and right. Not the best point guard matchup. Not the best power forward matchup. But it looks pretty good otherwise. Um, 
A little bit of a pace-up game. Should see some extra scoring for Toronto. I guess the blowout is in effect, in theory. Um, I would definitely prefer DeRozan to Lowry tonight. And that is with the caveat that DeRozan has not been very good as of late. 20, 25, 30. I mean, you're looking for 40-plus here. Uh, I'd be willing to take that shot. Um, I think DeRozan looks pretty good. Uh, a little bit more muted on Lowry, especially with the, the higher price tag than DeRozan. Has been a little bit more consistent lately, but the matchup you know, concerns me just a little bit. Uh, I definitely like Abaka, 5,300 on FanDuel, 4,900 on DK. Um, I'd be willing to entertain a little bit of Abaka. Prices on DraftKings look a little bit better than they do on FanDuel. Van Vliet's always, you know, worth a little bit of a flyer in a GPP scenario. Um, number one matchup for centers. Could this be a Valanciunas night? 7000 is just so expensive. Yeah, I don't think I could get there for Valanciunas. I'd imagine there'll be a couple flyers on him, but my priority coming out of this game will be DeRozan. I think uh, I think he's in a decent spot, especially with the Nuggets on the back-to-back. -back. Speaking of said Nuggets, um, 108.75 implied total, which is ninth. Nine-point underdogs in Toronto. How bad do they need this game? Uh, they have a 14% chance of making the playoffs. If they lose here, they are probably sunk. Uh, they have to win here to to feel good. So, no pressure or anything. Just got to beat the number one seed in the East. Um, Nuggets ended up really balanced yesterday. A bunch of guys in the 30s. Uh, Wilson Chandler at 5,600, 5,200 on DK. Uh, Denver with a really, really difficult matchup, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, not great center. Uh, so really, the, the one guy to pay attention to, I guess, is probably Jamal Murray. And uh, I think Jamal Murray's price is outlandish right now. This is a guy who, um, you know, needs to get to 40 just to hit value. I mean, he can get there, but that's going to be a tricky proposition. Um, my fantasy points per minute... Numbers don't like him. My projections in general don't like him. I don't really like him. It's definitely a little bit more in play on DK at that $6,600 price point, but FanDuel, I won't be anywhere near him. Um, I'm a little nervous about Denver across the board, especially with the way they've played in these games that matter. Um, so I'll likely be muted on... Chandler, Barton, Jokic, Millsap, and Devin Harris. I'm just not very happy um, with their scenario right now. I'm going to knock some of these guys down. Uh, let's hit... Knock, down, knock Barton down. We might not be doing this right now. This is going to just lock up the cheat. No, oh, maybe not. Knock Devin Harris down. I'm going to knock Wilson Chandler down. Millsap down. Just dull those edges just a little bit. Yeah, um... I, Getting guys against Toronto is really not going to make you famous, so I'm going to avoid most of these guys. Um, they'll probably pop up a little on the optimizer. I might need to knock them back a little bit, but this is not the matchup for me. Now, Houston. Boy, are they going to be popular tonight. The Houston Rockets are 17.5 point favorites, if you're looking for perspective on how bad the Bulls are. They're 17.5 point favorites. And there's no James Harden and no Clint Capella, which is just, you wouldn't expect a team of Chris Paul, Eric Gordon, Trevor Ariza, PJ Tucker, Tarek Black to uh, be putting the fear in anybody, but he is. So, tons to like here. 
Um, Eric Gordon is 5,600 on FanDuel. He's 7,200 on DK in an absolutely amazing spot on FanDuel. You need to smash him hard. Uh, no way around it. Exceptional matchup across the board, too. Uh, all, almost top five in every position. Top three at shooting guard, small forward, power forward, center, which is nuts. Uh, Trevor Ariza is not the guy that I'm super interested in here just because there's such better value elsewhere. Uh, Gerald Green is in an incredible smash spot on FanDuel, 3,700. Uh, also a great spot on DraftKings, but just bananas spot on FanDuel. Uh, clearly, Chris Paul looks great at 8,400, uh, being able to run the show. Um, you know, PJ Tucker and Joe Johnson are puntable because of the amount of bump that, uh, like, the, there's just an overwhelming amount of extra shots to be found um, with Harden out. So I'm going to have tons of Gordon, tons of Green, tons of Paul, little bits of Tucker and Johnson. Uh, it's just a crazy night to grab the Rockets. And guys like Gordon, Green, you know, even Tucker and Johnson to an extent, like, they're going to play big minutes. It's The Rockets don't go deep, and they're already shaving two guys out of a rotation. So I'm not concerned, really, about the blowout. Uh, if they blow them out, those guys are likely a part of it. And uh, they don't really have many alternatives for, like, subbing dudes out. Like, Gerald Green's going to play 30 minutes almost by default. There's just nobody else to, like, really stop that from happening. So love the Rockets tonight. Uh, it would be hard to not want to just absolutely smash them. Their implied total is higher than uh, their recent averages in points, so all signs point to this being an incredible, incredible matchup for Houston. Uh, it's just they're going to be crazy owned too, as they should be. Now for the Bulls, uh, 100.25 implied total, which is 15th. Uh, they are 17.5 point underdogs. In Houston, I can't get over that. Um, not the best matchup against point guards and centers, but you know it should be an okay matchup in general. I don't get the sense that Chris Paul is going to bring everything that he has defensively tonight. So something to keep in mind there. Uh, campaign at fifty five hundred is someone that I would continue to take a look at. Uh, I've had a decent amount of him over the past couple games uh, for the Bulls. I think that continues at that price point but after that um you know we're still not expecting to see chris dunn or zach levine uh Markinen is expected to play uh, sean kilpatrick is on the team now um, he should get a decent amount of run at 3500 i think that's worth he's min salary on uh, both sites and i think he might actually be worth a gpp flyer um, he should get a big chunk of minutes you know bulls are in tank mode and no better way to get somebody uh, closer to the bottom of the barrel than to uh, take a guy that the Nets had earlier this year and don't have him any longer. Um, you know, if you're not good enough to stay on the Nets. How good could you really be? And apparently the Bulls are signing him to like a three-year deal or something, so go Garpox. It's probably all non-guaranteed, but still. Um, yeah, I don't really have a ton of interest here in anything for the Bulls. I mean, you can say Portis a little bit on DK, but really, I'll have some campaign, maybe a flyer lineup or two on Sean Kilpatrick, and that's basically it. Now, the Miami Heat, 107.25 implied total is 11th. They are four-point favorites at home against the Cavs, uh, coming off a day's rest, which is always nice for the Heat. Um... Let's see, we've got Dragic at 6,600, 6,800 on DK. No problems going there. Uh, Cleveland not very good defensively against point guards. Um, not very good defensively against small forwards and power forwards either. So uh, this is actually a pretty solid spot for Miami. Um, I like Dragic. Uh, when Josh Richardson's under 6,000, I'm generally kind of interested. He has the ability to... You know, go up and, he, like you'll see here, he, you know, got to 35, 40. So definitely some upside for Josh Richardson. Um, 
James Johnson at 5,800 on FanDuel is someone that I'm going to want to have a good bit of. Uh, you know, I'm okay with having a little bit of Kelly Olynyk. 7,000 is a little bit scary of a price point, but has been up into the 40s in two of his last three, plus the 60-point game a couple nights before that. Um, so, yeah, Drogic looks good. Richardson looks good. James Johnson looks good. Kelly Olynyk is passable. Uh, Tyler Johnson, I can see a little bit of. Uh, not too much interest in Wade or Winslow or Ellington, though. But lots to like there. I mean, Cleveland's not good on D. Now, speaking of the Cavs, uh, four-point favorites in Miami. Uh, tied for fifth in implied total. We've got LeBron at 12-3. 11-6 on DK. Uh, not the best matchup. Miami is pretty solid defensively, but, you know, obviously my uh, LeBron has some history in Miami, so different game. Both teams have something to play for. LeBron has been on another level lately. There aren't any other... Oh, uh, no, Giannis does play. What's the small forward Sitch look like right now? Okay, so those guys are both there. AD. Okay, so th three studs tonight. Uh, three guys over 10,000. Um, I'm not so sure that I think LeBron is in the highest upside spot. Uh, I would say that he's relatively safe. Doesn't strike me as the type of game where LeBron is just going to fully crater. Um, but just defensively, I don't I don't see it as the full huge upside game. I'll have a bit of him, uh, just because of how much value's out there. Uh, it's going to be really natural to get a decent amount of Giannis, uh, AD, and LeBron. So I'm not worried about it from that aspect, but. He's probably my least favorite of the three studs. Not an indictment either. Um, I like him. It's just I like those other guys better. Uh, still no Kyle Korver. Um, I think that taking flyers on Jordan Clarkson and Rodney Hood could be worth a shot. Hood, uh, 4,700 on both sites. Oh, God, my nose is so itchy. Um, went for 30 in his last game, which is great to see. Uh, I think taking a flyer there could be interesting. Although, again, be prepared for you know a difficult defensive matchup. Um, for me, it's just going to be small doses of Clarkson and Hood. Maybe a little bit of Kevin Love. Nothing crazy. Uh, his price is pretty much where it belongs now. And then uh, maybe a small amount of George Hill as well. But outside of LeBron, it's hard to get too excited about anything. Pelicans, uh, 112 implied total, which is fourth. Um, they are one and a half point favorites at home against the Blazers. Uh, very difficult matchup. Or not, maybe not very difficult, but difficult matchup nonetheless. Um, we've got AD at 12-5 on FanDuel, 11-3 on DK. Um, he's been at 55 to 60 in his last five games. What's the Pelican status playoff-wise right now? 91% to make the playoffs. Uh, projected to be in a three-way tie with the Jazz and Spurs for the fifth seed. One game back of the Thunder. One game ahead of the Wolves. So every game counts here for the Pelicans as they're jockeying for position. Um, I, I like AD here. What's his history look like against uh, against Portland? Uh, injury, two big games last year. Went for 54 earlier this year. Yeah, I, I prefer AD to LeBron, but just slightly. It's more positionally as well, just because Giannis is also at small forward and there's not another gigantic power forward um, for AD. So I'm fine there. Drew at 8,000, uh, I'm definitely fine there. 
I think that's a pretty good price for him. He was, you know, up around 9000 a week ago. So no problems taking a look at Drew. Uh, Rondo, uh, if he plays, I don't have much issue with him at 5700 on FanDuel. That's not a bad price. Certainly worth a flyer in a GPP for someone that can get up into the 40s and 50s like he did uh, last week. Um, other than that, I'm good. Uh, so just my focus will be on AD, Drew, and Rondo. Relatively balanced across the board. Nobody that I need to go crazy on, I don't think. Uh, for the Blazers, one and a half point underdogs in New Orleans. Eighth highest implied total. Um, really good matchup. Uh, best matchup for shooting guards. Second best for uh, point guards and power forwards. Fourth best for centers. Sixth best for small forwards. You can't really beat that. Uh, we've got Dame at 9,000, 9,400 on DK. Uh, just incredible spot. Dame at 9,000 is amazing. For a guy that can go 55, 60, 65, like he can go bananas. Um, I'm going to have a lot of Dame Lillard, especially with all the value that's out there. That should be an easy fit. Uh, same for CJ, 7,300 on FanDuel, 7,500 on DK. I think he's in a really good spot. Back-to-back 45-point -back games out of CJ. If you get that again here, you're doing backflips. Matchup says that it shouldn't be an issue. Uh, but the most interesting guy here is Yusuf Nurkic. Uh, last four games, minutes, 30, 27, 27, 30. Uh, he's at 6,900 on FanDuel, 6,700 on DK. He's my favorite center play of the day. Um... I see no reason that Nurkic doesn't have a big game here outside of getting into some foul trouble. Um, so I'm going to likely have a good bit of Lillard, McCollum, and Nurkic. No problems having lots of those guys at all. Uh, my two biggest like team stacks will be Rockets guys and, uh, and Blazers. And then uh, if you want to sprinkle Harkless in, I think that'd be fine. And that's mostly on FanDuel, but either way, it will really work. Both these, uh, Portland and Houston, though, are my, my biggest focus. Now, for the Kings, which is you. Kings hosting the Dallas Mavericks. The Sacramento Kings, one and a half point favorites in Sacramento. Holy shit. That's how you know it's the end of the season, when the worst team in the league is actually still a favorite against another tanking team. There's a slurp for everybody. Coffee was hotter than I expected. Um, solid matchup for point guards, shooting guards, and small forwards. Nope. Point guards, shooting guards, and power forwards. Really difficult matchup for small forwards and centers. Um, from a price perspective, only guy I really like out of all of this would be Willie Cauley-Stein on DK. And even that is muted for the matchup. Um... I'll take a look at Scal at 5,300 on FanDuel, but otherwise, I don't really like the pricing of anyone. I'm certainly not taking Buddy Heald. Uh, if you want Bogdan on a flyer, that's fine. Um, but I don't really like the game. Uh, I, I just I don't want to have any real bit of Sacramento. Everything's GPP only for me. Because you can't really trust the minutes and who's going to play. Although Sacramento has been a bit more steady than most teams uh, lately. We've got the Mavs. Uh, no J.J. Barea. So full run for Dennis Smith. Uh, best matchup for point guards on the board. Smith is 7,700 on FanDuel. 6,700 on DK. Uh, you really want to have a, a decent amount of Dennis Smith on DraftKings. That's a really good spot for him. Uh, I'm fine having Harrison Barnes as per usual. Uh, he's, you know, it's just a solid play at small forward in a situation where he's not one to uh, like his role isn't a guy that really changes all that much, and he's a guy that tries to score. It's kind of rare for some of the small forwards that are out there. Not the best matchup though. Um, really, the only guy that I'm looking at for Dallas is Dennis Smith. Uh, if there's any more injury news, that could be a little interesting, but I don't really like the pricing of anybody on Dallas. Now, the Warriors are hosting the Pacers. Uh, there's no line for this right now. No Curry, no Thompson, no Durant. Uh, Draymond expected to play. I've got the Warriors favored by three. That could certainly change. 
Um, it would be the seventh highest implied total, but that's a little bit up in the air. Uh, very difficult matchup for point guards, small forwards, and power forwards. Um, Quinn Cook is at 6,000 on FanDuel, 5,900 on DK. I think you're, he's worth a look. Uh, it's a that's a solid price for him. Just be aware of the matchup, but he'll be filler. Maybe not even filler is the right word. Uh, Draymond eighty five hundred and eighty four hundred. I'll have him, but I won't be super excited about it. He has looked good with you know Durant and Thompson and Curry out. He had two fifty point games uh, you know a week and a half ago, but not one I'm going to go absolutely bonkers for. I don't like a lot of uh, the Warriors tonight. I'm, I'm going to be happily avoiding most of them. Indiana. Uh, Pacers 108 implied total. Well, again, made, completely made up, but that would be 10th. Um, Oladipo at 8,500, 8,300 on DK. Hmm. I mean, their de- Warriors defense with all these guys out is going to be bad. Uh, I think Oladipo is certainly worth a look in GPPs. Um, I think a lot there's a lot of upside there. I see a lot of upside for Darren Collison as well. Uh, Fifty eight hundred on Fanduel. He could be in for a, a solid night. Uh, I'd f- say that he probably looks pretty good in cash. Um, I think a flyer on Miles Turner is worth it. 6,600 on FanDuel. Not as much on DK, 6,500. But, you know, Turner would need 33. Um, He's hit that mark twice in his last four. Uh, Has the ability to go well over that. So, Turner and GPPs looks pretty good. Um, I'll have a solid amount of Oladipo and Turner. And then uh, Collison as well as some filler. Final game of the night. The Clippers hosting the Milwaukee Bucks. Uh, Clippers 114.25 implied total, which is third. Um, Not the best matchup. Uh, The Bucks have been pretty good limiting uh, from a fantasy perspective uh, recently. Lots of guys that are just sort of in between. So Rivers, Harris, Lou Will, DeAndre Jordan, uh, Taya Dosich. Um, I think that they're all relatively balanced, as you can tell by most of those grades. Um, if I needed to prioritize any of these guys, I think I would start with, I would start with DeAndre. He'd be my first pick here. Um, then probably Lou Will. Yeah. Yeah. DeAndre, then Lou Will, Austin Rivers, Tobias Harris, and then Taya Dosich. Uh, Tyrone Wallace expected to be back now that the G League season is over. Um, so yeah, I, I like the Clippers a lot. Well, I like the Clippers marginally a lot, if that makes any sense. Which I'm sure that it doesn't. But they're all, um, you know... A couple hundred dollars underpriced, which is perfect. Um, you want to try to get that value in any way that you can. But I would definitely go DeAndre, Lou Will, Austin Rivers, Tobias Harris, and then finally Taya Dosage. Uh, I like them all, though. And it's hard not to. So finally, the Bucks, 111.25 implied total, tied for fifth. Uh, we've got Giannis at 11-2, 10-3 on DK. Pretty good matchup across the board here. Um... Giannis has been quiet lately, but did have the 74-point game and the 67-point game uh, about two weeks ago. Um, I love Giannis here. I think that he's a a better value than LeBron at that particular price, and I'll have a a pretty good amount of um, of Giannis because of where the value is. I expect to see a lot of like Lillard and Giannis combos. Uh, I like Chris Middleton, although 8,000 is a little scary. Four straight games in the 40s is something that I'm willing to take a look at. Um, And then Bledsoe, slight revenge game, if you want to call it that. 7,500 on FanDuel, 7,300 on DK. Uh, No problems having a little bit of him. Um, 
other than that, you know, I'm not going to prioritize guys like Jason Terry or Snell or Brandon Jennings. Um, I think Henson is fine if you want to take a flyer. And uh, I don't, man, I don't know what's going on with Jabari, but I don't necessarily trust him. He'd be GPP only for me. So let's see uh, what this is going to look like in the optimizer. Um, obviously, I will be around all day, so if you have any questions, you know, feel free to hit me up. Um, live stream tonight, starting at 6. It's a good night for a live stream. Let's see what we've got here. Gonna be, I think we're going to see a lot of rockets and blazers here. We shall see. Randomness up. Well, what do you know? Lots of red and green. Or, yeah, red and green. Red and gray. A lot of Gerald Green. A lot of Eric Gordon. A lot of Nurkic. A lot of Paul. A lot of Lillard. So, let's look at it like this. We'll grab Gerald Green, we'll grab Eric Gordon, I'll grab Nurkic and Lillard. There is a Chris Paul lineup in there somewhere. I think that's a bit of a force. Let's see, Giannis or AD? Grab Giannis. Let's see what we got here. Um, that one ends up with David West. That was close. I'd probably lock all that down except for Millsap and West and see what else pops out. Um, I mean, I don't really have any issues with like this one. Lillard, Rivers, Gordon, Hood, Giannis, Gerald Green, Tobias Harris, James Johnson, Nurkic. Like that looks really good to me. Um... Oh, man, it's going to be a fun night with all this value out there. If that value hits, scores are going to be insane. Let's check out DraftKings. Oh, stomach growling. All right, EDK. This one's going to look so much different. Pricing has just been so different on these sites lately. All right, what do we got? A lot of Jokic. Did I miss something there? No, it's just 8,800. It's a great price. I get it. Don't love the matchup, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I could see why there's a lot of Jokic popping up. So we want to grab Gerald Green to start. I think that we want to grab Giannis as well. We might as well grab Jokic if that's what the numbers are saying. Um, I'm going to safely grab Kyle Anderson and walk through this now. I think Kyle Anderson's price on, uh, on DraftKings is certainly worth a look. Um, I think I might need to back off of Giannis here. Look at the, uh, just the ratings. All right, so Gerald Green is first and foremost. Then I think we want to grab Jokic. And Nurkic. And then... Dennis Smith Jr. around anywhere? Nope. Maybe Serge Ibaka. Let's see what we got here. Like the Sean Kilpatrick flyer could be interesting. It's why you're seeing him so much because he's at minimum salary. Um, you know, so something like Drogic, Kilpatrick, Anderson, Ibaka, Jokic, Gerald Green, Giannis, Nurkic. I like it a lot. Um, you just got to be prepared. You know, there's a lot... 
there's upside for Sean Kilpatrick if he's going to get the minutes that I'm expecting um, at a minimum salary on DK, but something you need to be prepared for. All righty, guys. That is it. Like I said, uh, I will be around all day. Feel free to hit me up. Um, hit up the comments section. Uh, follow me on Twitter. Sign up for awesomeo.com. Uh, today will likely be the last day of the Josh Engelman YouTube channel and the Josh Engelman Twitch channel. Um, I'm going to be creating the Osimo versions of both of those things tonight, likely to go live tomorrow um, for them. Uh, I mentioned yesterday, I'm probably going to start doing some Let's Plays on my current channel, so if that's not something that you're going to be watching, you know, I totally understand. I'll probably do some Let's Plays for uh, OOTP Baseball. Um, I'll do Total Extreme Warfare Wrestling, uh, World of Mixed Martial Arts, the MMA Sim, uh, maybe a little FIFA, uh, maybe some Civ Six. Um, lots of options, lots of games to play, and uh, you know I think that'll be fun um, to check out. But yeah, keep an eye out. I'll tweet out links to the Awesomeo channels once they are created. That'll be one of my morning tasks today. Um, but that's the direction everything's going to be going. The videos will be posted there. Um, I'm going to start doing some writing uh, this week, so keep an eye out for that. We've got baseball coming up in a couple days. Lots of stuff going on. So you know, go sign up at awesomeo.com right now. Everything that we're putting out is free for the moment. Um, pay attention for these YouTube links and uh, follow me on Twitter. I'm going to be everywhere right now, guys. So get ready. Love you guys. Have a good day. Good luck.